Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. It's my pleasure to be on. We're continuing our series, Questions About the Quran. And you know, Dr. Shabir, when we open the Quran and we look at the different chapters, it begins with the opening, Al-Fatiha, and then it, it, there's, there are different chapters, and there, in every Quran that we read, that order will be maintained, right, till mm -hmm. the end. Mm -hmm. So where did that order come from? Was it revealed by God? Was it decided upon by the Prophet Muhammad? Or was it decided by people after the Prophet Muhammad, his companions who compiled the Quran? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me start by observing that uh, there, is, uh, th th there are 114 chapters in the Quran, and each chapter is subdivided into a number of verses. Mm -hmm. The shortest chapter has three verses, the longest chapter has 286 verses. So uh, the, the, the order of verses within a chapter, that is also like a question. First of all, there's the order of the chapters, mm -hmm. like who determines which was chapter number one as opposed to chapter number 114. Mm -hmm. And then, um, if let's say a verse has three, cha a ver uh, let's say a chapter has three verses, who determines which verse is number one, for number two, number three, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yes, because the first revelation, which many people think is the first, is Iqra, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, mm -hmm. Bismillah, Bismillah, but then that occurs, you know, towards the end of the Quran. Yes. So the question is, well, why didn't it just come as as it was revealed? Why didn't it just appear like that in the Quran? Mm -hmm. Why was it reorganized? Exactly, exactly. So, so let me answer Lots that. Lots of questions then. here. Yes. <laughs> so in terms of this first uh, revelation, which is uh, based on a common report, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was being told, Ikra, bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, read in the name of your Lord who created. Uh, that is now the, uh, the beginning of the 96th chapter of the, of the Quran. Only the first five verses were said to be revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on that occasion. The remaining verses of that uh, chapter uh, were revealed on some other occasion. Um, uh, now they're all put together. Mm -hmm. So that gives you a sense that uh, uh, pieces of the Quran are revealed to the Prophet, peace be upon him, a piece from one chapter, maybe a piece from another chapter. And then uh, a third, a, a revelation may come that belongs to the first chapter th th that we were already talking about. So, who determines this? The order of verses within the chapter uh, are um, said in, in Hadith works uh, to be dictated by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself, to his companions. So, a piece of the revelation is uh, imprinted in his mind somehow. He repeats that to his companions. They write it down. And then he tells them that this new piece that has now been revealed to me uh, should be written in such and such a chapter at such a point. Mm. So that means there is a way of identifying the chapter, uh, sometimes by a kind of a keyword or the way the chapter begins. And then there is a way of uh, identifying the verse uh, just after which the new piece of revelation should be placed. Uh, they were not working so much with verse numbers and chapter numbers. Otherwise today, like we want to refer to a verse we might easily say this, uh, the verse we're talking about, no compulsion in religion, that's Surah 2, verse 256. So now mm -hmm. uh, everybody knows where to go and find in the Quran, the second chapter, verse 256. It's a breeze, right? Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but but the, the, the numbers were not used in this way at that time. And so uh, they would refer to what the chapter says or deals with, and then the specific verse uh, where this should be placed by mentioning maybe the wording of that verse. So that settles for us that the uh, sequence of, of verses within each chapter uh, were dictated by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and we believe that he would not have done so of his own accord, but uh, that would have been part of the revelation that was given to him by God through the angel Gabriel as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the verses are settled then. Let's talk about the chapters themselves. Yes, so the, the chapters, um, uh, one would like to think that the chapters are also settled. Mm -hmm. uh, however, the, uh, the reports about uh, the settlement of the chapters uh, are a little bit vague in that uh, you may find some reports saying that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was praying 
And uh, in his prayer, he recited the second chapter of the Quran. Then he followed up with the third chapter of the Quran, what we now know to, the th to be the third chapter. Otherwise, it was not mentioned first, second, third. It was mentioned Surah Al-Baqarah, then Surah Al-Imran, then Surah Al-Nisa, and then Surah Al-Ma'idah, what we know to be the second, third, fourth, and fifth chapters of the Quran today. Uh, so, so we get a sense that that is the appropriate sequence because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is reported to have read these chapters in that sequence. And so, you too, mean he recited it in prayer? Then? Yes, he okay. recited it in prayer. So, and his companions heard that order. Uh, and on some other occasions, like it is mentioned that the Prophet, peace be upon him, prayed to, and, and led people in the Friday prayers. And he read what we now know to be the uh, the eighty eight and the eighty seventh and the eighty eighth chapters of the Quran. So we know them to be that in that order: uh, Surat uh, uh, Al A'la, followed by Surat Al Ghashiyah. Uh, but but we do not have this kind of report for all of the chapters of the Quran, and that may explain why it is reported in our history that some companions of the Prophet peace be upon him had. Uh, their personal copies of the Quran, which we refer to as a mushaf in, in, in the Arabic, meaning a codex, and, and their codices um, uh, were, were observed to have had the uh, chapters arranged in some places uh, slightly differently. For, so, for example, it might be mentioned that in the codex of in the Masood, a close companion of the Prophet, peace be upon him, what we now know to be uh, surahs number 89 and 90, uh, were in his uh, copy uh, in the reverse order. Uh, but, but that does not pose any problem in terms of interpretation because classical interpretations of the Quran did not take so, uh, uh, so much into consideration the uh, order of the surahs. So it makes, uh, for interpretation, it makes little difference that uh, surah 3 comes after surah 2. Because it's not, the stories are not chronological, right? That's right. Each chapter is interpreted individually. Mm -hmm. However, if, if we had the, the same lack of certainty with, uh, in terms of the, num the verses and their sequence within the chapters, then that would be a problem for interpretation because uh, a, a story is being told and the sequence is continuous. And, and what is said secondarily uh, depends on what was said primarily. Mm -hmm. So we need to know the proper order of what is said within a, a, an individual surah, uh, but each surah is interpreted uh, as, as a unit independently of the other surahs. Uh, it, not, not so much independently of the other surahs because the Quran still has to be interpreted as a whole, uh, but, but independently of the sequence of the surahs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Quran that we have today has a certain order. Who decided that order? You mentioned that different companions had different orders within their own individual mushafs. So how did they decide which one is going to come first? Yeah, so this is one of the puzzles in, in our Islamic history because we have 114 chapters. And, uh, you know, our math students out there will know from combinations, uh, that their study of combinations, that, uh, you know, if you have uh, uh, two things to be organized, you know, you can, you can have A first and B second or B first and A second. So you have two different ways. But if you have three things to be organized, A, B, C, you can have A first, uh, B second, and C third, or you can have uh, B first and A second and C third. You can have so many combinations. Mm -hmm. So if we go to 114 chapters and, and we think about the many different ways in which the 114 can be organized, this will be like, you know, exponential. Uh, so if, if, it wouldn't be by chance that, that everybody agrees on the same order. And, and this is why we do find that there are some variations among the mushafs, but uh, uh, among the codices of the early companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him. But those few variations which are mentioned, you know, is, is really a drop in the bucket compared with the large number of uh, combinations that are, that are theoretically possible. So that means there were some limiting factors. So one limiting factor was uh, the reports that showed that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, read it in a certain sequence. Uh, the second uh, limiting factor may be that uh, even though there were no clear uh, statements about how, what sequence should be followed, uh, for, for Muslims to have memorized the Quran uh, as they did uh, from starting from within the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they must have had a sequence in mind. Because without a sequence in mind, 
uh, how do you even remember if you have uh, read a certain surah already? Like, it, let's say we're talking about surah number, let's say 63 as an example. So somebody starts reciting, but not in any particular order. Uh, so he recites surah 2, 3, 57, uh, 72. Uh, how does he remember that, did I read 63 or not? Mm -hmm. But if he was reading it in sequence from, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way down to 114, as we know them now, then he would know that he has actually read the whole thing. So because the Quran was recited publicly in the public prayers, the whole book was being recited in public, uh, there must have been a known sequence. And that known sequence must have uh, maybe coalesced among the, the collective of uh, Muslim scholars on the Quran from within the first generation of the, of the Muslims, from, meaning the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, otherwise, you would have uh, massive variations. But we don't have the massive variations. We have some minor variations in terms of the surah order. And that, is, uh, that, that shows that the um, order that we have now coalesced very quickly among the companions of the Prophet. Very interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Actually. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe. And please donate to support our work at QuranSpeaks.com.